Merry Christmas everybody. Welcome to a video that I think I said I might do a few years ago, but I was waiting to see if Netherrealm would actually do the logical thing and give us more customization slots, but they never did. But here we are, finally getting out of the way now because I've been struggling to find the drive to work on videos, so I figure something simple like this should help me get back into the swing of things a bit. So basically we're going to be going through all the customized versions of the characters I've got in MK11 and I'll also show off a few other ones that I'll make independently just to show some other ideas you could go for. Keep in mind with these characters some of them they do change sometimes like sometimes I'll be like I'm bored of this one so I'll swap them out but a lot of these are fairly consistent ones I've kept as basic ideas since I first got the game back in 2019. So I guess was that with Scorpion. So I tried to have the the first version not necessarily be the default version but what is kind of the classic kind of representation of the character. So with Scorpion here we've got the past version from the story mode. Yeah I believe that is H-E capital I capital I spawn as we all know that is a way to get around the profanity filter when it comes to the letter L. I like this design, it's, it's, it's pretty good. I just wish that it was, you know, the MK9 design for the sake of consistency with MK9, because MK11's got very little of that. So next we move on to mythology. So this one is the classic one, but it's themed around MK mythology. So I try to tone down the fire stuff. I'll be showing you, in some cases at least, the intros and victory poses and abilities chosen as well. So with this one, it's toning down the Hellspawn stuff and focusing just on the spear. Also toning down the sword. So it's basically just stuff he would have had in MK Mythologies. I think the reason I chose Mythology specifically as the base is because, well, one, it makes him a bit more different in terms of abilities, but also because of the human eyes. Now, when you look at the sprites in MK2, he did have human eyes, yes, but when you see that the portraits, he'd have white eyes. So the only time Classic Scorpion would have had these eyes and that would be the intent. And it's not just they didn't want to fuck with the eyes and the tiny sprites would have been mythologies. Then we have MK9. Now, I, I had this Scorpion made even before we had the MK9 Scorpion. I think I showed this off when I did the video on customization, how Netherrealm should expand the customization. And I think it was... It might not have been that one. Yeah, I think, I think it was this skin, because it's got a somewhat similar flame pattern. So it kind of works as like a stand-in. It's not the greatest stand-in, admittedly, when you compare them directly. You know, it's like it's like when you listen to Corey Burton's Christopher Lee impression and you're like, damn, he sounds exactly like him one-to-one. -one. Then you compare the two one after the other and you're like, oh no, he sounds almost nothing like him, but somehow it tricks your brain. <laughs> so with the MK9 theme, I made sure that he has this intro, the way Scorpion pops up out of the fire for his MK9 intro. I, I have all the victory poses just because none of them really match the MK9 one. When I can do that, I do. But when I'm not going for something specific like that, I'll just have all of them available. Also, you may notice this is not the mask that came with the MK9 skin. There's something about it that just looks off to me. I, I just prefer the way this one looks. Uh, and the thing goes with a spear, that that's the MK9 spear. Or it might have been completely silver back then, but then we got this. And I'm like, that's just not the thing. So it's always weird when they do that, and it's like, sometimes you get an alternate version of the thing, sometimes you'll just get something completely made up, sometimes you get nothing, like when they put in classic jacks and didn't put in any new versions of the classic arms when they should have done. Like, how about a version that looks like the original white body paint they put on him? And I was actually trying to show why I went with swords, I guess because swords became a bigger part of his moveset, starting with MK9. You know, distinct from the 3D era, where it was actually a moveset that you could use. Grandmaster, just because Hanzo is a different thing. Here, he's, uh, I toned down his Hellfire stuff as well. Even though he does have those abilities in MK11, and you could argue the comic, I guess, as well, but there it's more like he transformed into Scorpion to do it. I don't know, to me, it always felt like it just made more sense if he just didn't have his Hellspawn powers, because why would he still have his Hellspawn powers if he's a human again? Or I never um, expecting us to believe he just always had these fire powers. I mean, you know what they like when it comes to actually acknowledging that he's a Spectre and not a Revenant or Wraith, as MK Onslaught is going to be calling him? Like, fuck, guys. Really? But the names is generally, sometimes I try and be clever, sometimes it's just, this is the version it is. Oh, a, a basic descriptor. Pit fighter. Because you fight him in the pit. Ha <laughs> ha. I had no specific motivation when it came to the, the sword and spear. I mean, I could go for something very basic to match the MK1 and 2 aesthetic, but you know what? I like the glowy stuff. It adds a bit more unique stuff to your boy Reptile here. He just comes in using the spear because that's as close to a Reptile thing as you get in the intros because he doesn't use swords, well not, not this type of sword, but he doesn't use fire. And for victory it's just a, a classic MK2 victory pose. Not the one he had, but it works. I still think it's weird that they gave this skin to Scorpion and not Sub-Zero, like I get it, but they could have added little extras to rework how some of his moves work because Sub-Zero has a slide and a, a spherical projectile. It would just make more sense to give this, this skin to Sub-Zero, you know? 
At the end of some of these, I'm going to be cutting to new audio of me in the future, very briefly showcasing some other ones that I don't normally have, but that are some pretty cool ideas that you could try and recreate yourself if you feel like it. So this one is an attempt at MKX Scorpion. The colours aren't exactly right. I don't know why this is one of the skins where the mask colour isn't yellow. It's black by default, so you have to find a gold one and have to put up with the glowing yellow parts, but yeah. And here we have Monster from Deception. I wish they would use Monster as an actual costume for Scorpion in one of these games. Because it's a really solid design. Alas. Smoke, obviously. A lot of Smoke's moves in MK2 were taken from Scorpion. Scorpion was kind of the go-to guy for secret boss fights. Noob did it as well. I don't know why it was always Scorpion, but... Yeah, so this one actually really fits because Smoke did have the spear early on. Chameleon, if you got a more reptilian redesign. Even though Chameleon doesn't actually wear grey because that Smoke's thing, he just is rainbow, changes colours all the time. Yeah. And for those of you who missed out on the opportunity to get the MK9 Scorpion costume, because from what I understand, it's still a pre-order only item for Aftermath, or is it Ultimate? Either way, this is what I used to use for MK9 Scorpion before I got the actual costume. This is about as close as you're going to get reasonably, and thankfully the gear is already in the game. The stuff they added for the actual costume are just not quite the same. Because sometimes when gear goes with a specific costume, but the gear's in the game before the costume is, they will add redundant alternate versions, whereas other times they just won't. Stupid game. I'll go to Shang Tsung next, and then from here we'll work our way through. Now, you might recognise this one, Second Chance. This is themed after the MK9 version. He's got the MK9 gloves, or close enough, and then the colour scheme is based on his black and red. And that is why his cosmetics are Infusion of Souls, where he walks in as the opponent and then shapeshifts into himself, because that's what he did. Except that here, it's not just like swapping the model in the middle of an effect, like a big green glow or something. And also, it doesn't lag the fucking game when he does it. At least, if he does it in his home stage, his throne room with the rain effects, it'll always like chug the game. And then your soul is mine because his victory pose in MK9 was to take the opponent's soul. So you can see how we try to recreate specific versions of the character. I'm not that familiar with how Shang Tsung plays in MK9, because you don't play him in the story, so I only would have played him a bit of the challenge tower and to get his arcade ending, and that was... God, that was over a decade ago now, so... Yeah, I just went with something basic that is a classic Shang Tsung thing. So some of these have been recolored for the sake of getting footage for videos. This is not what I normally have. What I normally have is this one, I'm pretty sure. No, this one because it's blue and yellow, and so the theme I'm going for with this one is MK1. And that's why the moves I gave him are a classic Shang move and also a Reptile move, because Reptile was in MK1. And he's the only ninja whose moves you can get that was in MK1. And then it's just basic stuff, like stuff that is classic Shang Tsung for intro and victory animations. Boss Rage, because that's a, a fun show, and he was the boss of MK1. Then we have Your Soul's Mine, because that's the maximum number of characters you can get, so I can't have Your Soul is mine, just Your Soul's Mine. So here I was obviously going for the movie version. In terms of the gear, I tried to get it as... So it doesn't stand out as much because the actual game, he in the film rather, he actually has his jacket sleeves all the way down, I'm pretty sure, and no gloves. But here they just did this because that's what they were going for with this version of the character. And so sometimes I'll, I'll just use this as one of my other variants and then just have a different design for something else. But then, you know, the whole it has begun, the whole shape-shifting while walking, which the best of that was so I made an edit where it's like Donald Trump is Shang Tsung. <laughs> it's like, it's actually a pretty well-done effect. Then you got your soul is mine, and then another victory pose where he does the it has begun. Yeah, I just wish you could get the proper colours though. It really fucking sucks that you can't. Then Master of Souls, this is just the one that has all the ninja abilities. I just like this design, so I went with it. The colours are just a classic style Shang Tsung. It's kind of a shame we don't actually have one that has the old man Shang Tsung in purple to be like Shaolin Monks, but yeah. And then as you can see down there, just giving them all the intros and victory poses, because why not? And Reborn of Ermac. So this is like a, a sequel to Ermac's MKX ending, where Shang Tsung is reborn from him. So all his moves are Soul and Ermac focused, and his colour is red. When I originally made this, I had him wearing this outfit, but I've started using this one instead. Now obviously I wish I had more slots so I could have more stuff. And so now we move on to Shao Kahn. Straight up, he who must win. Now that's a name that I just used. Because originally I did have one based on MK9 kind of and one based on 2 and 3. And that's what this one is. And obviously he who must win is for MK9. But that meant there were two skins that were functionally the same. Just they have different helmets. So I got rid of that one and kept the classic one. Even though I do prefer the modern helmet. Well not modern. The, the, the one true Khan here. The, this is I guess the modern helmet. That one's crap. It's overdone. I think that as far as Shang Tsung... 
Shang Tsung, oof, Shang Tsung having a helmet, that'd be cool. But in terms of Shao Kahn's helmets, this design is the best one, obviously with red. It's kind of weird that it's not in red, but that kind of design is, I, I think, the best you'll get for Shao Kahn. And all the gear is made to be classic. His victory pose is just the one where he's laughing, the classic one from MK2. And then other stuff, it's like the what's the least intrusive when it comes to the intros. This is just the MK11 Khan. That's kind of it. Then we have Dragon's Hand. This is meant to be him when he's serving Onaga. Gone for a more draconic look with some nice glowy green stuff just to stand out for the green aesthetic. Now, Conquered, the, the premise of this one is because this was from the Edenia Combat League season when all the characters that were in that got purple recolors, two purple recolors that are the same kind of purple, not even like a, a pinky purple. Like, I mean, this is actually one of the more different ones, I guess, because at least his pants and his belt change, <laughs> whereas most characters don't even get that much. It's, it's Edenia theme. So the concept for this one is what if Shao Kahn lost to Edenia and was effectively conquered so completely that he became a warrior for Edenia? And then went with the samurai armor for that. Well, the samurai armor is part of that, but I, I, I need more of the ones with the samurai armor. It's a decent look for Khan. It's actually way better than what we got for the default. I, I still don't know why the draconic thing was done. So having a version that either tones it down or obscures it, that's better. Now, do not pursue. Some of you might be familiar with the phrase, do not pursue Lu Bu. And yeah, because because I look at this armor and it reminds me a lot of Lu Bu's design in Dynasty Warriors 9. The armor is somewhat similar. And so I thought, why not make a Lu Bu themed one? This is the helmet because he's got that, that thing flapping in the back, like Lu Bu's famous like cockroach antler things that you'll see on like every depiction of Lu Bu pretty much. There's no halberd to use as the spear or the axe, or the hammer rather. Well, they should have had some axes. They should have had some more variety in terms of what weapons Khan can wield. Nothing's particularly noteworthy when it comes to the abilities here. I just did whatever, aside from this one, which was just the classic style with the hammer toss and the, uh, the pointing for a taunt, and that's Khan. Now we move on to Frost, and so we have Cyber and Quaid, just basic MK11 Frost. Failed Protégé, based on, I said it before, this is supposed to be Deadly Alliance Frost, but it's really just MK2 Sub-Zero themed. I like some of the actual additions they've made, like, I, I like the little circles here, the little gaps in, in the pants, so that you can see part of her thigh. It does add something. Uh, she's got a really nice ass too. But the point is, uh, the high heels are a pointless addition. No prior version of Frost, even Frost in this game, does not have high heels, so there is no reason to include them there. They just did. But I gave her abilities and intros that are designed to be as non-cybernetic as possible, which is not always possible. Like with these victory poses, you, she still uses the, the cyber body parts for it. Although admittedly in these cases, it is mostly from the backpacks. You can imagine, ah, she's got some kind of weird backpack and that helps her out. Tekken in. I don't think I've even mentioned this all that much, but for those not familiar, in the original timeline, when Sektor was ousted from the Lin Kuei, he went and formed his own faction in Japan called the Tekunin, and they appear in his tournament edition ending, which is where it's established, and then they appear properly as the enemies for a section of Armageddon's conquest mode. And so here it's, what if Frost joined the Tekunin? In fact, if you have been reading MK Chronicles, then you'll know that in that setting, after the Battle of Armageddon, Frost does indeed join the Tekunin. Whether or not she'll end up looking like this, or maybe more like Cyber Scarlet from MK9 or something different, I've not decided yet. But I think joining the Tekunin just is not a bad direction to go with Frost, especially if you're amalgamating the two timelines and you want to go for the Cyber Link Quay stuff here. So Frozen Time, just a fun little name. I just, I just really like the, the really smooth, shiny look of this skin. I don't like the headgear. I think removing Frost's hair makes it look too much like Kronika which may have been the intention. I don't like that part, but otherwise, I think it's a really cool look. Uh, no pun intended, believe it or not. <laughs> there are the little gaps where it's ice inside instead of legs, or maybe that's just an ice aesthetic. It's it's cool. I'm so, I really don't mean to keep calling it cool, but that's just the way I talk. So, uh, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> then we have Noob Cybot. Get it? Because it's... Just... But yeah, for this one, I'm trying to go for more of like um, what weird undead moves could she have and stuff that's somewhat similar to Noob, like with the big axe is kind of like his scythe in some games, the skeleton aesthetics, and I just kind of like the mask. I'd, I'd rather the mask not have the tusks, but you know, it is what it is. I'm not sure why Onslaught chose such an angular mask for Frost, but that's what they went with. And aside from the fact that her skin is less pale and she doesn't have the seams and such that she does here, this is how she is in Onslaught. I don't know, the idea of Frost being around around the time of MK2 is just weird to me. Like, how old is she? Then we have Nightwolf. We start off with the Matokan Guardian, which is just the classic Nightwolf. Obviously, styled after the MK3 version, that's why he doesn't have his uh, spirit animals and stuff. It's just stuff that works for classic Nightwolf. 
that's really it. I wish there was a one with a red jacket. There's so many missed opportunities when it comes to different recolors they could have. I mean, every, every skin got 10 different color schemes, and it's like you'd think you'd look at stuff that already exists. Nightwolf had a somewhat similar outfit in Deception, but it was a red jacket. Let's give him that as a recolor and then see what else we can do. Then we have the, the Restored Shaman. So the logic for this is this is basically taking this design and using it as him after being restored from being a Revenant. So he's, he's older, wiser, different headgear because I don't like the default helmet. There's something about the helmet that just doesn't fit Nightwolf. I don't like it. So I gave him this outfit and he's got like, all the stuff. He's got all the spirit animals and such. I also quite like this Tomahawk. It's a fun design. Kind of reminds me of like the Witcher logo, which I don't even know what that wolf-ish logo is. It may be even it is a wolf, I don't know. But yeah. Then we have Soulless. So this is designed after MKX Nightwolf. That's why I've gone with the black and blue and the classic headband. And then you can pair that to this one, Hellhound. Get it? Because, you know, Nightwolf. Which is based on how he appears in MK11. Some of these details are, and might not be, the, be right. I'm not sure if I've got the right, say, Tomahawk or Axe design. But I, I went for that. Now with these two, I've removed certain intros and, and abilities. Like the, the stuff with this, the animals is gone. It's just the other stuff. Because my kind of head cannon, it's not really supported by the game, but it just makes more sense to me this way, is that when Nightwolf becomes a Revenant, he's effectively abandoned by the Great Spirit who needs to pick a new Nightwolf instead of letting this undead guy run around with the Great Spirit's abilities. And that's where New Guardian comes in. So this is an idea that I do want to introduce in MK Chronicles. It's the idea of a next generation Nightwolf because they introduced the concept that the Nightwolf is a mantle, not a person. They never did anything with it. They just use it for an intro and a for an ending and it's bio and a few lines here and there. But it makes way more sense to actually just introduce a new Nightwolf who will go out to try and hunt down and kill the previous Nightwolf, you know, put his predecessor's soul to rest. And he's focused on light and lightning powers. But because this is meant to be the uh, the MK3 slash MK9, maybe I should have gone with the summoning light thing because of his death in MK9. But, you know, whatever, it's, it's, it's fine. I figured this one guy's not quite in, fully in tune with the spirits yet, so he's not focused on the spirit stuff the way Restored Shaman would be. But I guess if these were ideas would be to be to put... I suppose if these ideas were to be put together, this Nightwolf dies, becomes this guy, and so this guy hunts him down and kills him, or finds a way to purify him, and then he shows up here... But this version is, yeah, I'll, I'll change it so that he doesn't have the spirit animals. This one is no longer Nightwolf. He's just Grey Cloud, and he is going to help mentor the new Nightwolf in how to use his abilities. And yeah, you can tell the reason I've got the mask on is to hide the fact that it's clearly the same guy. Like it's clearly the same face. So I have covered that up to help mask that fact. Next we have the Joker. So. Keep the default clown prince just as is. That's a fine design. I would say this is probably the best design for the Joker that Netherrealm's done, honestly. I mean, it's not that weird Suicide Squad inspired thing from Injustice 2. The one from Injustice 1 was fine, but you don't mute the colors of the Joker. You don't do that. That's silly. And there's something a bit kind of uncanny about the one from MK vs. DCU. You know, it works. It's just, I think this one works a little better. It's looks more like a person. Then we have Joker. <laughs> I think I made all these like right when the Joker came out for the game in 2019. So Logan Paul, Logang memes were still around back then. But this is him as obviously like a like a mob boss, hence the design. I just like this particular colour scheme. I think red works quite well with the purple the Joker normally, normally carries himself with. Then we have biggest bat fan. It's what if he was a vigilante? I wish the I thing wasn't part of this. I wish that was just a, a thing you could get separately. Or maybe if, that, if they just like ripped off the Arkham games and had it that the way Penguin's monocle is actually like a bottle that was shoved in his face, which when you think about it is, is just bloody silly, but it's fun. So this version is, these poses are the ones that tone down the whole murder and guns and stuff. So like, well, what if Joker tried to turn himself around and become a, a member of the Bat family? Haha, ha, bat. I think that is intentional. I think it shows that, that that bat because it's a bat. Then we have Joe Khan, a Shao Khan themed Joker. There's nothing else to it really, that's just kind of it. Then we have Payday, which is themed around uh, Payday 2. So here his, he uses victory poses and such, like that's explosives, and there's the card, and it's Payday themed, because uh, I, I played that quite a lot back in the day. And that's Joker. It's, pretty basic there's not really much more you could do with it i did want to make one based on the joker movie but for some reason they didn't do a color scheme of that again plenty of missed opportunities when it comes to the colors why not give him one that is red and yellow there is a red one but it's not got the yellow pants it's silly what the fuck 
Johnny Cage. Now, this is a character I could genuinely do 15 variants for, because I have so many ideas. But when I've only got five, here's what I'm working with. Rebooted, this is the MK9 version. So I've got these wrist things that are meant to be like the bandages. There is actually a bandages option, but it's too tight and clean, whereas it's a lot messier and, and the bandages are thinner, I think, in MK9. So I think this carries the vibe better. Although when these things are blue, they look a lot more like what he wore on one of his hands in Deadly Alliance. And I don't know why they didn't just give him that. Also, this isn't the default pants. This is the, the default pants with the white colour scheme to make it look a kind of paler like the paler colours he had in MK9. And because it's the MK9 version, he also has this, you know, because he comes in doing the, the shadow kick for his original MK9 intro pose. Generation X, this is the MKX Johnny. Intro pose is because he has comes in doing the kicks for one of his intros and the other one he pops on his sunglasses uh, the autograph no the autograph is his victory pose in mkx or, or all that and so that's him and so i try to re reflect his different variations from mkx here with the brass knuckles and the I, I, th I think the shadow elbow move was exclusive to that too but yes yeah, so i've got that MKTD OJC, Mortal Kombat, The Death of Johnny Cage. So this is him as a Revenant. He's got the uh, the knuckles because he's uh, got more of an attitude as an undead. And that's basically, it actually has the same same abilities as this one. Hmm. Maybe should pull a Nightwolf and get rid of his uh, shadow abilities. Focus on him being powerless, but he's still a tough guy. Recast, and what if Johnny was recast to Lyndon Ashby? And that's kind of it. The watch, I think, came with a different skin. And I think the belt buckle did too, but these just fit him better because he didn't have a noteworthy belt buckle or noteworthy anything on his hands. They toned down the stuff he can do. Like he throws the sunglasses because the sunglasses actually do feature in the movie, but I gave him a, like a stunt double instead because he don't really do the shadow moves. He does the shadow kick once in that first film, and then the second one it's a flying kick. But the second one's not, not even using the same actor, so you know whatever. Jimmy Cage. So, <laughs> so for the un the unfamiliar, the last MK production done by Threshold, who did the '90s movies and TV shows, was Federation of Martial Arts, which was this weird web series. And since it's meant to be in continuity with those productions, I guess set after Annihilation, Johnny's dead. That doesn't stop characters like Scorpion and Ermac and Shang Tsung from showing up, but instead of Johnny, they introduced Jimmy Cage. And Jimmy is is Johnny Cage's brother who joined the Black Dragon. And since we got this Black Dragon skin for Johnny, I figured this could be a good way to represent Jimmy. And I do have plans for a take on Jimmy in NK Chronicles in the future, but what those plans are, I'm going to keep to myself for now. Now I'm going to show you some other ideas I have for Johnny. Again, I can do 15, but I'm going to keep it limited to just 5 more to bring it up to 10, because I don't want to be here all day. I mean, I've already been recording for 30 minutes, and I've only gotten through, at this point, 7 characters. Yikes. Yo, is that Ash Will- No. It's Jackie Chan. So, sorry, sorry, sorry. Chani Jack from Hong Kong, who co-starred alongside Johnny Cage in HUA! This has been canon since 2002. If you don't know that, you're not a real fan. Green Lantern because Johnny should have had either a Booster Gold or Green Lantern costume and it's a travesty that he didn't get that. But we've got that awful Catwoman costume for Gitana. So bad. And it's me. Me. I am in this video game. This is me based on the older way I used to represent myself before I got the waistcoat and all that. From back in the Saints Row days. So now we have Sonya Blade. And we kick things off with MK3. And so everything she does is kind of stuff that could have been done in MK3. She wouldn't have had holograms or soldiers or turrets. So this is stuff that relates to MK3 Sonya. And the turrets are just because it has to be. And her abilities are somewhat classic Sonya. That's Realm Defender. You know, because Defenders of the Realm. Get it? Combat. I could have called it combat time. Anyway crossover so this is mk versus dcu sony this was one of the first ones i made because as soon as i saw that skin i was like that's perfect for mk versus dcu sony which is not the best design but i feel like it's a somewhat underrated one i'd like to see them take another crack at that particular design in the future buried alive so that's the logic for sony being a revenant because she was buried alive and now she's back as a revenant and she's uh, she's not happy legendary you probably figured out that, yes, this is Sonya from the Legends duology. I, I imagine she'll get a new design for Cage Match, because while well, they not put her in Cage Match, I, I sure can't wait to see how they she and Johnny are just insufferable together again. But 
yeah, so this is an easy enough one to do. I'm surprised I didn't just do like a proper Legends recolor for Combat League. Like, it still baffles me how little they actually did with this game. Like This game right now has a thing added in the latest patch where it's like, buy MK11 Ultimate. And it's like, I'm playing MK11 Ultimate right now. You don't need to promote this game. And someone on Twitter made the point that maybe they're just laying the foundation for when the next game gets announced. And it's like, hey, pre-order the next game. And it's like, that's probably it, yeah. But yeah, this game would rather promote itself, content you've probably already got, and it would also rather promote a movie that's over 25 years old than a movie that comes out within this game's lifespan. It's ridiculous. Then Bladed Edge. Black tank top, white pants, red shoes. Where have I seen that colour scheme? Yes. This is a Mirror's Edge reference. I went with aerial moves, stuff that's very acrobatic, because Mirror's Edge. I just wish she had a bit more acrobatic stuff in her intros and victories, but sadly she doesn't. But that's what I've got for her for now. I guess I should have established this before. I'm not going to do here's the character as they are by default in this game, unless I have a way to fix the design. So I'm only going to be showing off like different takes, completely different ideas. This is a take on MK1 Sonya. It's not a perfect colour scheme. This other one is also a pretty decent approximation, but neither one is perfect. So really just pick the one that you think is most similar to the actual MK1 design and just stick with that. Shame they didn't bring back her original hairstyle though. That would have been cool. This is Sonya as she appears in Onslaught. And yeah, putting her in green was way better than the beige or grey or whatever she wore in the actual story. It's weird how often there are better alternatives in the game already and they just don't use them. They pick the dumbest ones, like Jade, but we'll get to her later. And here's Sony's alternate costume from Onslaught. A few details are different, but this is about as close to the border as you're going to get for you can recreate it pretty damn faithfully in MK11 versus they made arbitrary changes to some of the colour palettes and thus it can't be done in MK11. This is Sonya based on the second movie and I'm pretty sure that's what the colour scheme is actually supposed to be based on. Although I think the shorts are maybe tinted green a bit. Shame they didn't bring back the hairstyle from that film. That would have been cool. This one is based... Oh wait, I actually have to finish that sentence. This one is based on Jill Valentine's alternate costume that was also based on Sarah Connor from the Resident Evil remake. The colours aren't quite there, but I think it conveys the idea well enough. Next is Cassie Cage. So we open up with Commander... Well, I've had this one to represent MKX, but I've also had... I think I used it for a recent video. I think by default, I just have it as either this one or this one. That's why I've got the, the X-themed drone, because I was going for the MKX theme. But then I came up with a different way to convey the idea, and so I've been using that. I just need to... Just a sec. And I hope that when I choose, go back, it's going to save the ones I've selected. Because sometimes it doesn't do that. Sometimes you change the intros and outros, and the game will be like, what, you changed that? See? See? Proof! Proof! You saw it! I, I, I chose all four victory poses, and it's only given me two. It does that... I don't know why. I do not know why the game can't keep up with this. It's not difficult. It's just changing the values on those. Fuck you. And so this is how I, I conveyed the MKX idea. It's Cage 2.0. Based on MK1 Johnny Cage. So gone for the goggle-ish sunglasses. All the shadow moves. And the turret here is meant to look like a camera or projector. And then for her intros of victory poses. It's just stuff that is more fitting of the whole Johnny Cage thing than the soldier thing. Bad Cass, like badass, because this is her with her black dragon skin. This is what if like, Kano got to her. I think with the moves here is just whatever that I've not used elsewhere. That's what I do sometimes. It's, I don't have a specific move idea, so I'll just use whatever's there. So it's like, well, I've not used this move, so I'll just do it here. Then we have Earth Force. So this is Cassie with an Earth Force theme. So she's got all the aerial moves. Bit of a, a Carol Danvers vibe going, although I think I made this design before that movie came out. I don't quite recall. But that move was was uh, kind of boring anyway. Then we have Cass Effect. Yes, N7 themed armor from Mass Effect. But she's going for like a, a techie style. So she's got the drone as an actual focus. And I think the design I went with for this one is because it kind of reminds me of Jack from Gears of War. And, you know, reminding me of Gears of War is generally a good idea. So let's go with that. Also, yes, she does indeed have a somewhat similar pistol to what you see in Mass Effect. Yeah, I wonder if that's intentional. I mean, they even made a, an icon for it. Maybe that was the idea. But we're doing space. Let's do some fun little references to other sci-fi games. This one is based on the game Prey. Not the original Prey, the more recent one. That's the main thing this outfit reminds me of. But I never played Prey and I did play Mass Effect. So the N7 armor is the thing I chose to have in my normal rotation. 
Next we have Jax, the uh, Barrett Wallace lookalike himself. Like it's shocking how similar the outfits of him and Barrett are. Like pops his sunglasses on him and give him one of his arms back, and it's literally the same design. So by default, discharge. It's just the MK11 Jax focusing on hand to hand. Then we've got rearmed, so that's the MK3 version. Occasionally, I will give him the red pants based on MK2 because in MK Gold he had those. It's just a shame you can't have this with the beard too because that was the first time Jax had a full beard because he had just the moustache originally and they gave him a full beard in MK4. So I'd love to have that as a detail and sometimes I'll switch out to that but I went very classic with this version of Jax. Then we have Killed in Action, you know, the Revenant version. Unfortunately, the Revenant arms, they don't look anything like the ones he had there. They were spiky, but the spiky arms don't really fit with the aesthetic. Also, as you might be able to tell, I've given him the blue recolor rather than the default color scheme just because I've already got one using the basic color scheme. And while this is slightly recolored, I want to have something a bit more, a bit more of a stark difference, you know? So here he is as a Revenant. Then we have just Jax to the Future, the past version brought into the, into the present. He prefers to use shotgun instead of the grenade launcher and then we have for jackie which is his other mk11 self not particularly inspired designs i admit but Jax is one of those characters but there's not a ton you can really do with him outside of like this exact design but i'm going to take away his shirt see i would have done that to make the mk9 version but for some reason there's no version of this that has green pants where his arms don't get a weird recolor that's another issue that this has. I feel like we should be able to color things separately to give us more freedom. If you're gonna make customization such a major focus. I would 100% put money down that this particular color scheme was based on Farmer Jacks. Just look at it. The colors are positioned where the shirts and overalls are positioned. It's just a shame it's for the younger Jacks, not the older one who actually retired and became a farmer. And then by taking the MK4 slash gold jacks and giving him the Kronika arms, which have fingers approximately the same colour as his skin, we have a take on MK2 jacks where he's basically glued some pieces of armour to his arms. Like a proto cyber arms. Then spawn. So spawn just has the default hell spawn. I think this one actually is hell spawn, like not H E capital I capital I spawn. Because for some reason that's just what he has as default, so you best keep that if you don't want to lose it. Souls and swords. Sometimes you just want to transcend history in the world for tales of souls and swords that are eternally retold. Because that victory pose is very similar to his intro in Soul Calibur 2 and the start of his weapon exhibition. So yeah, I went with that and a bit of a weapon focus. That's not guns, that's Soul Calibur 2 spawn. Even though that version didn't have the cape, but you can't get rid of the cape because it's part of his moveset here. So what can you do? And then we have Hell Spawn. That one is... I, I didn't... I didn't re... I didn't realise that I had that name twice, I'll have to do something about that, but this one is a Shared ID themed one. I've given him smaller boots and gauntlet just to make it stand out less and make it a bit more MK-ish. I like the way this looks. Then I have Gunslinger, originally just had the normal colours for this one, but I figured a bit more variety would be nice, and I think blue and orange is a really underutilised colour scheme, so I went with that one. And obviously it's all gun focused. Intros, weirdly enough he doesn't use guns in any of his intros or victories, so... And then we have Vigilante Meat. So as soon as I saw this colour scheme, I was like, wow, that looks like muscle. So the idea is what if Meat from MK became some kind of like superhero vigilante wearing like white and black and going around all the realms, righting wrongs and beating the shit out of evil outworlders. But also for this one, that I went with a chain focus because, you know, like Scorpion. And so I went with animations that involve fire, ultraviolence or chains. I do wish you could disable certain moves like finishers so you could better reflect it. Well, this scorpion doesn't use fire moves, so this fatality should be removed for him. But that's what I got for spawn. Next, we go to Knob Sibot. I just went with the default design. Instead of having the story mode version, even though that's what this is meant to be, the Sonado Escapee, the default mask is trash. I mean, there's a reason why MK Mobile didn't use it, and I think they changed it as well for Onslaught. I think they went with a different mask there. So the late Bihan went with the blue colour scheme, and he is themed after Bihan. He's got the projectile, he's got the slide move. Sickle is uh, icy, although he can't really sit here because the Colour scheme has changed it, but yeah, so that's the Bihan one, where he plays like his old self. Then we have Cybot, because Cybot's design is just basically just parts you have for noob anyway, so what if Cybot was his own character? I don't think I intentionally gave him the ice pick of Bihan. You know what, this one looks nice, it's got a little bit of oily effects on parts of it, it works. All the animations he uses are ones that are themed around the use of the shadows and stuff. Cyborg Punk 2077. I don't really like the default mask, I'll use this one instead. So obviously this is like a cyber noob, and that's kind of it. Also, I think the, the default colour scheme is... Yeah, the default one is this. 
with the orange like why would you not make the blue the default when that's what he has blue or white lights because of the color of his eyes and then we have extinction i think this is how i discovered that you couldn't use genocide because this is like reflecting the uh, saurian genocide so i think that was the idea and then it was like oh you can't use genocide and i was like oh well that's going in, that's going in a video <laughs> i don't think it inspired the entire video but i think it inspired at least that part the use of genocide which ended up being how i intro the video so I don't have a specific idea here, but here's some more Lord of the Rings ones. He's kind of got the White Hand of Saruman and the Eye of Sauron. I, I don't know what is with the Lord of the Rings stuff in this game. It's so weird. I don't know what it is about this helmet and hood, but it just gives me Nazgul vibes. Next, we have Baraka. So by default, we have the normal one with the metal blades, because that's what he has in the story, even though bone blades is what they went with for this. I mean, I don't get why you would change it to bone blades anyway, because like, by default, he uses the blades like they were metal. How do you make a spark fly off by scraping two pieces of bone together? It doesn't make sense, but this is just Baraka. And yeah, some of the intros and outros have been switched out just, again, for video recording purposes. That's another reason I would really like to have extra slots, so I could have a slot that's just, this is the one I use for video purposes. I need a skin that I don't normally have, I can use that there. Then we have Golden Years. You know, shirtless, red pants, just classic victory animation, and here he is with his uh, metal blaze and such. Yeah, MK Gold Baraka, as close as it can be. Onaga Second, so naturally, this is, of course, Deception Baraka with that colour scheme. Because I'm pretty sure that's where the colour scheme is derived from, with the blue top and the maroon pants and such. He also has, like, classic animations, and then even the uh, ridges. It's not quite the same as the ridges that Tarkatans had in the 3D era, but it's close enough to convey the idea. White Hand, the White Hand of Saruman. So this one is obviously based on the uruk -hai Berserkers from the Lord of the Rings films. White body paint is mostly nude, he's got... Uruk style helmet with the white hand mark. Like, you, this alone tells you everything you need to know about the depiction of the Tarkatans in MK11. Clearly, they took a lot of inspiration from Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War. The aesthetic comes more from the movies rather than the games. And then we have Arkham Inmate, which is just Killer Croc. I, I did used to have him with a helmet on to be like a, almost like a, a take on reptile. I think it might be this helmet or something like that. So like, this is like a take on reptile. Or some kind of like horrible Tarkatan soaring crossbreed. Yeah, I, obviously this would have hit a lot better if Reptile was in the game. But it's, it's fine on Baraka, you know. Like, there's certainly worse skins from the DC set. In terms of weapon stuff that was focused on, here's just about being vicious. Here's the flag. Here's the blades. And here's just kind of somewhat classic style stuff. And that's Baraka. This is Baraka in Onslaught, although in Onslaught the colours are a lot more saturated in general. So it's more red, especially when you see it in the cutscenes, it doesn't look quite maroon. But this is pretty much how he is in that game. Raiden. So I defaulted into the to this one. I don't like that they gave him such a different design from what he had in MK9. I like the design, but this should not be past Raiden. This should not be the Raiden from the time of the Outworld tournament. That should be closer to what he had in MK9. Then we have MK1 Raiden, Proud Thunderer, because he was just uh, had a lot of pride, and that's kind of it. Then we have the MK2 Styles Raiden with the amulet. I still wish you could take the amulet off, but you can't. But So this is meant to be him around MK2 or MK9. Dark Thunderer, just Dark Raiden. I changed up his staff, because for the staff he, he has by default is not the one you see in the cinematic trailer. In the cinematic trailer, this is what he's, he's bashing Scorpion's mask in with, not this tree branch. Like, he has this in the story mode, or at least present... Well, past Raiden, rather, does. I don't think present Raiden even wields a staff. There can be only one. This is one that has the most different abilities, like with the, the hovering and... He doesn't have the, the torpedo. He has the, the dash move. I mean, okay, I think he did do the... Yeah, he does the torpedo in the second film. So I might need to change that. But for now, it works fine. I might, I might give some of these moves to the Dark Raiden. But Dark Raiden is more staff-focused. Which, if I could get a Deadly Alliance costume or Deception, they would be using this stuff as well. Because focusing on the staff is just one way to convey the idea of 3D era with the weapons. Then we have Jackie Briggs. All Army, because that's just what it was called, one of her default. The default variation names are useful. Then we have Boot Camp, which is based on the Boot Camp skin from MKX, and so we'll try to emulate MKX in a few ways, like with the intros and victory poses. Briggs 2.0 is Jacks themed. I originally had the this one because it's a brown jacket, but the yellow doesn't really fit Jax, but purple is... That's been Jax's colour since MK3. That's kind of the classic colour you go to. Some, nowadays, it's been more supplanted with, like, green or grey. The moves are stuff you might see from Jax, like grapples and stomps. Mrs. Takahashi. So this is a Shade I Do themed one where she has uh, married Takeda. I think originally I used... 
uh, it might have been this one or this one. This has like the more vivid yellow parts. And I think it works well as like a someone affiliated with the shared idea, but he's not strictly a member. I think it's a pretty good design. I wonder what exactly they were going for with this design, because from what I understand, it was that all the characters who don't have a past version just have a further future version as their second costume. Because supposedly the, word, the, the story's plan was to have a future time period that just never made it in. So I wonder if that just inspired the idea or if this is perhaps what they were considering giving Jackie for that alternate future version. Who knows, but I like it. Uh, I don't really talk about the icons, like boots and then fist and then a skull. Makes sense, but yeah. And then we have loser jail because uh, Jackie is a loser. I don't like her. But also, I mentioned it before in a video, but there was just one person who got really upset that the black lady with the jumpsuit has an orange recolor because, oh, prison, of course that is it. And clearly it's not that they wanted to have an alien reference in the game after they had alien. And so they put that in and then they just came up with some recolors. I mean, it is possible that, that it was a prison jumpsuit as that was the theme. I doubt it was because Jackie was black. I'm sure it's just a coincidence. Uh, not everything is a conspiracy against minorities, guys fucking calm down and then we have the last character from this recording session because i've been going for over 50 minutes by now subby z or grandmaster blueberry as a lot of people have taken to calling him because of that one intro that wasn't even that funny to begin with so this is obviously an mk9 themed one like a classic one originally i used this with the bihan mask and that was bihan but i've since just given this to kwa liang this is a classic kwa liang style mk9 ish then we have mk2 tundra for obvious reasons where that name comes from uh went for a bit of a more basic style for him like not going with a bunch of moves that's why i got one of his slots empty or maybe it's because i changed an ability and the game didn't save it and then i didn't realize and by the time i came back to it i had forgotten that is a distinct possibility that does happen with this game then we have cryomancer of course so with him i went with for his moves ice on the ground as a, as a nod to frost his apprentice from this era of the series and the slide forward well he he does it with his shoulder in the 3d areas but also uh, when you enhance it he uses weapons and so that's another 3d era reference and that's what i was going for with him here so that's why he uses this one with the with his, using the weapons and then it's like a, a classic victory pose i think he actually had that victory pose in one of the 3d era games and that's Sub-Zero. And you may notice that I have not been using the third slot, the stuff on the belt, because it's a wasted slot. It's completely superfluous. It adds nothing. It's one of the worst equipment slots in the entire game. But here's Grandmaster Sub-Zero in MK11. And then we have Champion Bihan, which plays on the idea I've discussed in the past of what if Bihan, after being thrown into the Solnado, became the equivalent of Deception Scorpion, was turned into the Elder God's Champion. But because Scorpion was still himself as Scorpion, but, you know, Noob Cybot is not his old self, the Elder Gods somewhat reform him. And so he's an amalgamation of Sub-Zero and Noob Cybot. I don't know exactly what they were going for with this skin. Uh, with this one, the colour is too muted. And also the mask is not blue. I mean, I was imagining it was meant to be based on the, the concept of the Winter Shogun. I bet even most of the team don't even know. Also, uh, someone explain to me why... Why were there two? I get that you have one to go with along with Dimitri Vegas, but that was already a thing in the game. So why not make it that Dimitri Vegas comes with a mask that perhaps changes colours over time? Some weird uh, DJ RGB keyboard mask. You know, something cool and original for him. No? Alright then. Ermac, if you could change the colour of the ice and make it green, it'd be like he's making an axe out of his telekinesis powers, but unfortunately it has to be red ice. Also, I think the purple is a bit much. It's probably just an attempt to make him not just literally Ermac, but I think people would prefer it to just be literally Ermac. And same for Rain. Obviously, this one is a lot less useful post Rain's actual inclusion in the game, but it's alright. And here's the alternate version of Deception's outfit that Onslaught uses. I don't know why they didn't just use the Deception outfit as is. It's just kind of weird. 